Welcome to this Katana tutorial on the multiple network material workflow using Network Material Create Nodes. The ability to create multiple network materials inside one Network Material Create Node is a new feature of Katana 4, and it greatly improves efficiency when working with shading node networks. To take a quick step back, Network Material Create Nodes act as containers for your shading node network. They feature a unique left to right workflow and shading node designs created to improve the efficiency of building and editing materials in Katana. To learn more about the basics of using Network Material Create Nodes, you can watch the Creating Materials in Katana 3.2 course at learn.foundry.com forward slash katana. Originally, each Network Material Create Node allowed for one single network material. But in Katana 4, these nodes can now manage multiple network materials, improving this workflow even more. So let's take a look at an example. In this scene, we have two robot characters, each requiring a different material variation. So we have two separate network material create nodes. If we have a look inside each network material create node, you can see that the shading node networks look quite similar, as we actually have quite a few duplicate nodes across both of these networks. Specifically, both materials share the same transmission mask, roughness and emissive texture files, and they both require the same glass shader. By setting these materials up inside just one network material create, we can reduce the number of nodes we use by eight and avoid duplication. So let's start. Open the parameters for one of the network material create nodes. It doesn't really matter which, I've chosen the white material. To add a new network material, click the plus button and choose add network material. You can see a new network material appear in the material scene graph. And now if you jump inside the Network Material Create node, you'll see the new network material in the terminal sidebar, along with your renderers and USD output. These can be expanded and collapsed however you like, to help you work quicker with multiple renderers and network materials. You can now also fully collapse the terminal sidebar, if you wish. Bear in mind that if you are working with a Katana scene that was set up in a previous version of Katana, you may need to refresh this terminal sidebar in order to see the new options. So now that we have another network material set up, we can copy over the shading node network for the orange material. And once we've done that, we can start removing the duplicate nodes. So now we can start connecting the nodes from the white material network so that they're being shared with the orange material. First we'll need to connect the out UV output from the place 2D texture node to the UV coordinates for all the remaining orange texture files, which are the diffuse, metallic and bump. Next we can connect our shared texture files so the roughness and the emissive need to be plugged into the DL principles for our orange material. So connect the out color R output from the roughness file to the roughness input on the DL principled and connect the out color from the emissive file to the input on the DL color correction node. And then the out color R output from the white material DL color correction to the incandescence intensity on the DL principled for the orange material. Now let's connect up the transmission mask by plugging the output R from the clamp node into the opacity input on the DL principled for the orange material. Finally, we can plug our material layers into the DL layer material node for our orange material. Connect the transmission mask to the top mask's input and the out color from the DL glass shading node into the middle layer. The last thing that we need to do is take the out color output from the DL layer material and plug it into the DL surface input under a new network material on the terminal sidebar. And we can go ahead and tidy up the network using dot nodes and backdrops. 
I'm going to change the colour of the backdrops of the texture files to match the base colours of the materials, so that it's really visible which nodes belong to which material. I'm going to leave the shared texture files green so that these can be set apart as well. Now our network is doing exactly the same as it was before, when we had two network material create nodes. But we've managed to remove eight duplicate nodes, meaning that we're working as efficiently as possible. And we can go ahead and delete the old network material create for the orange material, and rename our new network material to robot orange mat, by double clicking on the name in the network material create parameters. If we set off a render now, we should see the same result as we had before. By removing duplicate nodes, we can also now make changes to the nodes that are shared between the two materials and see the updates on both whereas before we would have to update each node parameter separately. Jumping back to the material scene graph, we can also use it to organise our network materials further by adding namespaces and middle mouse dragging network materials underneath them to group them together. Any changes that you make here are also reflected in your scene graph tab. You can assign colors to your individual network materials to help distinguish between them at a glance. As well as toggle the interactive state of a network material and view information about the number of renderers and terminals that each network material is using. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more information on network material create workflows in Katana, refer to learn.foundry.com forward slash Katana for tutorials as well as the Katana documentation. Mm -hmm.